Hi, um, my name is Dan Anson. I'm founder and president of Brick Simple, a studio with offices in Boston, Philadelphia, and San Francisco. And what I wanted to share today was really we talked so much about augmented reality and really talking about creating these experiences that really feel different and take advantage of the features of augmented reality headsets. I mean, often from a user experience perspective, we were spoiled by um, design aspects of the web just translating the mobile devices as glass rectangles, touch screens instead of pointers. And really, when you're designing for AR, it helps to think, no, I hate to use the think differently, but you do want to think differently. So first, I just want to talk about um, the HoloLens. I mean, the HoloLens is this device, you know, you can call it a Concord moment. We call it the Apple II of, of wearable uh, AR, see-through AR. It has, to its uh, credit, this wonderful self-contained design. It integrates all these features which were not science fiction long ago. The fact that it works as a complete device, has wonderful spatial tracking, makes it truly remarkable. We all kind of accept its faults, but we adore the future that it promises. And as you see here, and you see the person there, it also has it awkward. Everyone's seen the awkward little pinch click gesture, telltale sign of Hall lens fatigue. Uh, but it really did introduce all of this in one working package for the first time. As John mentioned, we did a lot of work with Google Glass. We've done work with other augmented reality devices. We've seen many come and go over the past decade. Uh, but when we saw HoloLens, this was a device that could realize really, truly cool experiences. So I have here, um, you see Matt and our team of MIT, oddly enough. And uh, you see here CPR being performed as seen through the HoloLens. This is an award-winning experience that we developed working with the University of Pennsylvania Center for Resuscitation Science and a spun out entity called Emerge Labs founded by Mary and Leary. And what we were able to do is give direct feedback to how your CPR is being performed on a mannequin. We tie in live data through the Internet of Things, tie in live data so that you can see what's happening so the person who's performing CPR can get immediate feedback. And then also someone who's coaching or other students can see what's happening when you're performing CPR. And as you see circulation happening there, if you don't perform CPR effectively, you will eventually see that brain go gray. It's very sad. Um, but it does give you that feedback. And what we wanted to do when we created this experience is we wanted something that has no menus, no buttons. I'm not. I always felt with glass, the moment I touched the side of my head, we failed from a design perspective. And whenever I'm doing this, I feel like we failed. So we wanted to have something that you simply put on, tracks to the mannequin, and makes it all work. And doing an experience like this really does push and test the metal of the augmented reality experience you're developing. But one of the things you'll notice with this is how tightly that circulatory system model tracks to the actual mannequin. And when folks talk about tracking and they show off their tracking, it's one thing to have planets floating in space. It's quite another to have it mapped to an object in the real world. What I also love about this kind of approach and using real world objects is the haptics problem is solved. You have a real physical reaction and feedback to what you're doing. So I take an experience like this, take a time like this. What is it like to bring something like this to other platforms? So here we have uh, the Meta, and we're big fans of Meta. Meta is interesting in that it has a wider field of view of the HoloLens, but it also has uh, hand tracking. You can actually go reach out and grab things and not just pinch things like pixie dust. You can really go out there and reach. It is a tethered device. It's not self-contained, uh, but having been a, a fan of Meta and watching it evolve, they're shipping a real product you can put on your head right now. So taking an experience from the HoloLens and trying to miss that, how do well do we make that work on a meta? How well can that work? So if we look at this here, I'm going to click a little harder. So here we see uh, two of our guys. And one of the things you'll notice is that uh, the meta has this advantage of having all this horsepower of the at attached PC. But its spatial tracking isn't super 100% great yet. If you compare that to where we were on the HoloLens, where the circulatory system was clearly coupled and anchored in the mannequin, 
Here, as you move around, it plays a little catch up in the meta. And I just share everything we're showing here. This is done shot through the devices. In this case, this is through the feed of the meta, the HoloLens as well, and the others. I like that real stuff versus rendered because you can see what's actually going on. You can also see here, as you see the cable stretched across, is that uh, Tyler is moving along. He's tethered to a PC to do this. Um, advantage, of course, of this platform is that it is, um, you know, it's lower cost than the Hall lens. You can do more things at scale. And it does have a lot of strengths, but this kind of movement for this kind of application, particularly in healthcare, is part of a challenge of working on it with the meta device for healthcare applications. And they're making improvements to tracking. We're seeing improvements, but to really make these things work well, you have to consider the hardware capabilities to have that kind of immersive experience. So we'll take a step back from those see-through wearables. One of the great things that happened in AR was Apple including ARKit. Um, that was so important because prior to that, you had to go and you, know, you paid a license of some kind to embed this functionality in your application. It didn't come built in for free. Wasn't necessarily optimized for the hardware. And through Apple's um, acquire, uh, by Apple acquiring Mateo, they were really able to bring something that was quite powerful and effective. And one of the things we love about this platform is the SLAM uh, tracking that it has is amazingly good for a device that has no special sensors in it whatsoever. Uh, tracks very well. Um, it's fantastic in that way when you look at applications. We're currently using this uh, in orthopedics because you can provide that seamless kind of experience. Unfortunately, you're still holding that glass rectangle. You're still holding this rectangle, which compromises the immersiveness of it. doesn't make it seem as seamless. When we had that hall lens on our head, it felt like magic. We looked down and we can see into that body below us and interact with it. So that's one of the reasons why we really like uh, this device. Uh, first thing this morning for the folks who managed to see it, um, Matau uh, Hugh uh, showed Holokit. And we've been big fans of Holokit because the devices I've shown here when we're talking, uh, the Hall lens, it's $3,000 and up. You're looking at a meta, it's $1,000 plus hardware to make it work and go. Uh, with the uh, Apple stuff is great with the $1,000 phone. Uh, what we love about HoloKit is this way to democratize uh, access these experiences. And when you think about something like training someone in CPR, if I have a room full of people, putting a HoloLens on each of their heads is not cost effective. But I can have one HoloLens and then have others share in that experience using this device. We don't get any, I use device in almost quotes, it's cardboard. But here, we're not using any special sensors like the Meta or the uh, HoloLens. We're not, you are, all we're doing is making use of the camera and the self-contained features of the phone to make it work. And it can work quite well. So we can take that, and someone can hold it. It looks a little bit like a, a periscope. But we actually do get very good tracking. In this case, we use a mannequin to the mannequin. We have a 3D model. We actually track to the model of the mannequin. It's stable. This is a build where you see a work in progress. But we actually can provide bystanders and folks access to this kind of see-through AR. And that's the part that I've seen is I've seen evolve and with our involvement in augmented reality over the past decade is that the accessibility of these kind of experiences, things that we just kind of had fancifully on the whiteboard and on the to-do list, that we can make that happen and work. And when you take a device like HoloKit, which you can order on Amazon for $30, uh, you're kind of talking a 200 magnitude difference in price and a great increase in terms of accessibility. Now, granted, there are limitations, but we also created this as something that you're not clicking on menus, you're not relying on someone tapping in the air, that what you do is simply look down and be engaged. And healthcare use cases makes a lot of sense, education, industry, to give that kind of quick view and look. So as we're thinking about experiences, I mean, sometimes this hardware, and I think there's a great comment on the panel earlier, this hardware is like printers. You know, Two years from now at AR in Action, we're going to be talking about some whiz-bang new hardware, and there will be a collection of devices that are in that HoloLens class of experience. 
But devices like HoloKit, Meta, really allow us to explore and build these experiences now. And I'm very excited about that being in this space. I am obviously a big old nerd. Um, but for us, we really see a huge opportunity in work that we've done here in healthcare, work that we've done in industry, where these enterprise applications are here now and really enabled by these technologies. So I just want to thank everyone for the opportunity to uh, present some of these pieces. We do, we do have a table over in the demo area if you'd like to check it out. My contact information is here. I'm happy to speak and answer questions uh, beyond the presentation. But thank you very much. <laughs>